this mic. We want to make sure you can hear us and see us. We will be starting soon. And again, welcome to worship.
Good morning. Welcome to worship, everyone. We're so glad you're here, whether you're online, in person, at uh, Brad's Church in Kittery this morning. It is Second Sunday Jazz. They do jazz once a month. And I say, if we do jazz every Sunday, we don't have to do that just once a month because we have Chris. So we are here the first Sunday after Epiphany. That's why we still have Clyde. We weren't being lazy, just so you know. Are there any announcements this morning? I know we do have coffee hour, and we're grateful for Judy for getting that going. And if anyone would like to sign up for coffee hour, you can see her downstairs. And we do have the choir going, continuing. And we're so thrilled to have them with us. And we do have church school today. I think that's it. Isn't that nice? And we have our baptism next week, right? We get to baptize Caroline next week. So make sure, yeah. it'll be full next week. That's all we need is a baby. So let's prepare ourselves to worship God this morning. Let's join together in our call to worship. The God of new beginnings calls us this morning to worship. We come with open hearts and minds as we begin this new day. The God of hope has brought us together. To believe with God's help, we can do God's work with compassion and joy. The God of love holds us close. Let's journey together in trust and love and grace as we join in God's story. Our first hymn is Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. It's number 16 in your hymnal, or you can sing along on the back of your bulletin. Let's stand and sing together.
hope, we come into your presence this morning with confidence that you will meet us here. Where there is sadness, bring joy. Where there is tiredness, bring refreshment. Where there is despair, bring a renewed sense of hope. Let this place be a safe haven for us, a home for holy words and songs and prayers as we devote ourselves to you. We pray this in Niji's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our joyful response for God being with us is halle, halle, hallelujah. be seated and I'd like to invite our kids to come forward for a story stories are good we like stories you don't like stories <laughs> all right well you'll just have to bear with me then so why do we have the camel here because it was a Christmas pageant and the story isn't over. And the Christmas pageant, we say that the kings, the wise men came that very day, but really they came later. And we call that day Epiphany. And that day was on Thursday. So we're now in what we call the season after Epiphany. So I'm gonna tell you an Epiphany story. This is about someone named, can you say that word? Babushka. It's a, a Russian fairy tale. You ready? Once ago, in old Russia, in the coldest corner of that cold land, there lived an old woman named Babushka. She lived all alone. And if she was lonely, she never complained. She kept herself busy all day cleaning, and at night she slept well. Well, one morning in the deepest part of winter, Babushka was sweeping her steps of a great snowfall when she saw a strange group of folk riding toward her. The animals they rode on were unknown to her, larger than a horse with an odd hump in the middle of its back. But if she did not know what they rode, she knew the riders. They had to be kings, for they wore crowns of gold and silver. Babushka made her deepest reverence to them. She bowed to them, thinking that they would ride on. For she was but a poor woman, and her cottage, though clean, was very, very small. But they stopped by her door. And the beasts made strange huffing noses, noises through their noses, and one spit at her between its teeth. Because what do camels do? They spit. May we stop and sleep the day at your house, Babushka, they asked. She was so awed at the request. She did not wonder how they knew her name, but after she settled them in, all three of them in her one poor bed, 
she began to wonder how honest men would be sleeping during the day and riding by night, because that wasn't right. But when they woke, she did not have the heart to ask them. It was while she was cooking them dinner that one of them told her what she was afraid to ask. We sleep by day and we travel by night, he said, because our way is drawn in the map of the night sky. And they're nocturnal. Maybe they're nocturnal too. When she looked puzzled, he explained that they followed a great star. Where do you follow it to? Where are they following it to? What's the name? Anyone remember the name? Alaska. Not Alaska. That's a good guess. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. That's right. Well, where do you follow it to? To the king of all kings, said one, who is but a newborn babe, said another. Come with us, they said to Babushka. Come, follow. Let's look for the newborn king together. But there was so much to do, cleaning up after the three kings, that she shook her head. Let me first sweep up. I cannot leave my house in such a state. The king stood up, and they looked sadly at her. We cannot wait, Babushka. The only road we follow is outlined by the star, and we don't know how long that star will shine. I will follow as soon as I can, she said. And she shooed them out the door. The last she saw of them, they were traveling down the road. So Babushka turned back to her house and began to clean. She swept and she polished and she shook the covers of the bed till all the feathers blew about the floor. Then what did she do again? She sweeped. By that time, it was almost dawn and she fell asleep. When she woke up and looked outside, it had snowed again and covered all the tracks of the travelers. She thought maybe it was a strange dream. So by day she cleaned her little house and at night she would sleep, but she kept wondering about that little baby who would be king. And the more she wondered, the more she wanted to find him. So one day she cleaned her house for the last time. She locked her front door and she started out down the road. Everyone she met she asked about the baby king, and she peered into every cradle she saw, saying, are you the one? And in every cradle and in every child's bed, she dropped a little, a little gift just in case it was the very child she sought. She is still looking. Is there a moral to this story? Uh -huh. What do you think it is? You know what I think it is? What? It's never too late to look for Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, you have come to us as a baby. Help us to find you and to let all the love you bring live in our hearts for others. And together we say, amen. And you can go on to church school. time to share any joys we may have, prayers for people that we know or don't know. I invite you just to lift one up if you have one, or keep it when we have our silent prayer. I want to lift up Jesse and Leslie, and we pray for Betty and Maynard, and Janice. Are there other people you want to lift up this morning, or Joyce? Ernie? Yes, I would like to uh, lift up the members of armed forces, men and women who didn't get home this holiday season, and but are still on the job. And to remember them, some of you may have uh, a friend Thank you, Ernie. Anyone else? Yes, Adina.
for Mark. Absolutely. Betsy. So they are already there. Yes, that's a wow. Anyone else? Henry. Ukrainian. For what? Ukrainian. For Ukrainians. Thank you. Let's be together in prayer. During this quiet time of prayer, O oh God, we open our hearts to you, praying for people and places, giving thanks for blessings, lifting up things that are happening all around us, places that need not only our prayers, but change and peace, so much peace. We are thankful for the Christmas season. for the joy that it brought to many and for those who perhaps were not as joyful we are grateful for its gentle passing and we release it now as we start a new year we pray for our armed forces for those who serve and did not get to be home with families Bless them and keep them safe. We pray for Mark on his journey and give thanks that Abby and her family have reached theirs. We ask that you bless their family's journeys together when it begins. We pray for Ukraine every day we pray for what seems impossible to be possible in this new year and that the gifts that we have are used to help bring about much needed peace and hope in our lives Hear us as we lift up to you in this time of silent prayer. People we hold close in our hearts. ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here we are. Christmas was just two weeks ago. Does it feel longer? A little bit? Epiphany was Thursday, January 6th. The day the wise men discovered the Christ child. Two days ago, he was a baby. Just a few days ago. And today, in our lectionary reading, which many churches are going to be hearing, Jesus is being baptized. He is a full-grown man. My, how time flies. The first scripture reading that I'm going to share with you, and I'm just going to read part of it, is also part of today's lectionary. It's from the prophet Isaiah, and he is sharing a vision of the Messiah. So this is before Jesus was born. So we get everything today. 
the Jewish people hearing this are still living in exile in Babylon, and they're longing to return to their home in Jerusalem. They're longing for life to get better. They're longing for God to love them again. And Isaiah is encouraging them to have hope. So let's listen to God's word. This is God speaking through Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teachings. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. He will open the eyes that are blind, bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, and from the prison those who sit in darkness. See, the former things have, have come to pass, and new things I now declare. So if you were hearing these words after years of living in exile, what would you think? Let me tell you what you would be thinking. You would be thinking, something's happening. God is at work. After all these years, is there hope? After all these years, you might be filled with hope, hopefully. So now time has passed about 300 years since Isaiah's words, and a baby is born in Bethlehem, and the wise men follow a star to where the baby is laying in a manger, and they present him with gifts. And then, being warned by a dream not to return to Herod, because Herod is a very bad king, they go back to their own countries by another way. Epiphany is this day. And it's a day that we say Jesus is made known to the world. The thinking being that as the kings, the wise men, return to their countries, they stop and they spread the good news in every town they stop in, in every city, in every market square, and they tell the people listening, a baby has been born who is a new king. This changes everything because the baby is the son of God. So imagine hearing these words by the wise men. What would you be thinking? Oh, I already gave you the answer before. If you've been living under Roman rule for so long, this is what you'd be thinking. Something is happening. Is God here? After all these years... There is hope. And now, 30 years later, Jesus is being baptized. From the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Do you come to me? Jesus answered him, let it be so for now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came out of the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And with this, his baptism, his ministry begins. Something is happening. God is here. And there is hope. 
Can you feel it? We are a people of hope. The prophet Isaiah's vision, the birth of a baby born in a manger, the baptism of Jesus, they all mean something to us. They mean that in the darkness all around us, in the midst of a broken world, something is happening, and God is here. And we hope that once again, the world will one day be filled with peace and harmony and love, that one day it will happen. We have hope. And sometimes this, ho this hope is hard to hold on to. Sometimes the change we long for happens too slowly, like in Ukraine or Afghanistan or Iran or racial justice in our own country. But we hang in there even during our lowest, lowest days because we have heard the scriptures and we have heard the stories and perhaps we have experienced it in our own lives that God is here. So we have hope once again. I have a book in my study called Hope Dies Last by Studs Terkel, who I really like as an author. But I hate the title of this book because I don't think hope ever dies. At least that's what our faith tells us. Our faith gives us. If nothing else, we have hope. I want to share with you a story of hope. It's about having faith in the future, even when the present isn't always so promising. And this is told by Kathy Kinnear Hill. And it was on Moth Story Hour. Anyone here listen to the moth besides me? And while it's set in a political landscape, the politics is not the point of this story. And it took place when Kathy took a difficult campaigning job in a place where she felt unsafe and unwelcome. This is her story. It was Kansas City, Kansas, the year 2012. It was the re-election campaign for President Obama. I was working for the campaign, and one wonderful day, I walked into the office and found out that we were going to Skype with the president. I was thrilled. He popped up on the screen and gave us a pep talk, and he thanked us for all of our hard work. Then he said, get out of Kansas. We're wasting our time. For those of you who can do this, take the campaign to Council Bluffs, Iowa, and deliver Iowa to me, to us. I can do that, she said. I'd already worked on his campaign a few years before, and the duties include putting yard signs up, handing out pamphlets, registering people to vote, and having conversations. The president would say, just have conversations. Don't stop having conversations. So now we're heading from the suburbs of Kansas to campaign in the cities in the suburbs of Iowa. It's all going fine, until towards the end of our time there, I got a phone call. Will you go to rural Iowa, they asked. Being the committed person I am, I said yes. I am a middle-aged African-American woman, and together with another African-American woman older than me, we went to rural Iowa. We walked into the little campaign office. We got our, our Obama hats. We got our Obama buttons. We walked out of that door, and I said to my partner, Rita, who is one of the strongest and most amazing women I've ever met, I said to her, so we're going to do this, right? And she said, oh, yes, I am fired up and ready to go. Fired up and ready to go. Let's do this. And I said, well, yeah, I'm fired up too. Let's go. So we're walking down a little farm road 
and our first stop is a trailer park. And as we're approaching the gate to open it, we look up and there's a man, a big bear of a man with a big rifle. And before we can open that gate, he looks at us and he says, I didn't vote for your, insert a racial slur here, last time and I ain't voting for him now. You girls better turn around and get. And we did. Again, I looked at Rita and I said, you know, we don't have to do this. And she said, oh, I'm more fired up and ready to go. Let's go. So we did. We knocked on doors. We rang doorbells. And while nobody was as horrible to us as that man, they closed their doors on our faces. Sometimes we'd see a curtain lift up and then close. Very few people talked to us, but we just kept trying, kept walking, kept having conversations. We get to this one long gravel driveway, to this one farm. We start walking down it, and approaching us is the farmer who owns that land. He looks at us and he says, nope, I see what you're selling and I ain't buying. And I remember our president telling us, just have conversations. Just have conversations. And I said, can we just have a minute? And before he could answer, his wife opened the front door and she said, ladies, if you're going to be at my house, you better come in. Dinner's on the table. We were scared, but we were hungry. I'm thinking in the back of my mind, do I really want to go into this home in the middle of nowhere? I don't know these people. But before I can finish my thought, my partner Rita says, yes, ma'am, we are hungry. So we went in and sat down. And oh, that food. It was meatloaf that was melting in our mouth. Mashed potato and gravy, greens, cornbread, and sweet tea. It was soul food. And our conversations with Cecil and Wilma, it was a beautiful time. We talked about a lot of things. They asked us a few questions about the campaign, and we talked a little bit about that, but mostly we asked them questions about their lives. And they told us about their kids and their grandkids. They breathed for those grandbabies. They lived for those grandbabies. And they told us about the church down the way where they got married. Before we knew it, it was time to go. So we head to the front door and we thank them for this lovely meal and Wilma gives us a hug and hands us some food to go. And as we're walking back down that gravel road, Cecil is walking with us to get us to the, the main road. He takes both of our hands in his hand. And he says, thank you. Thank you for coming and sharing this time with us. And thank you for talking to us. Most of all, thank you for listening to us. Now, I probably won't vote, vote for your guy, he says. And we waved. We turned around and we walked a few steps up the road when we hear this. But hey, Kathy, I just might. Having faith in the future, even when the present isn't always so promising. That's what we are called to do as people of God, as those who follow Jesus, as those who are baptized in Jesus' name. It's part of living out our baptism, living into our baptism. It's hope. And then following that hope in our hearts with our feet. Something is happening. Can you feel it? Amen.
We've come to our time of offering. And as the plate comes to you, think about how you can offer yourself to God, to your brothers and sisters, to your community, your family, your world this week. If you are able to make a gift to the church, we thank you. And if you are a guest, please don't feel like you need to give your presence with us is gift to us. So let's have our morning offering to God. all together. Holy God, accept all the gifts we bring to our families, our neighbors, our communities, and our world. They are from our hands and our hearts. Help us to follow you faithfully and be a light to all. Amen. And we're going to sing, it is always my favorite song, We Are Walking in the Light of God. And there are a few verses, we are walking, we are singing, we are dancing, we are praying. So, and you get to dance if you want while we sing.
So let's remember as we go out filled with people of hope that we are walking in the light of God. Amen? Amen. Let's go. Thank <laughs> you.